Good afternoon, Trailblazer fans. Welcome once again to the weekly recap show inside the Amsler Campus Center Gymnasium. I'm your host, Assistant Athletic Director Jeff Polari, and what was a very busy weekend for the men's and women's basketball programs. Men's basketball capturing the Tri-State Tournament Championship led by MASCAC Player of the Week and Rookie of the Week for the second consecutive uh, week in uh, Keeland Cross. Women's basketball also split a pair of games this week with a win over Simmons on the road and a loss to Union, a very close uh, defensive-minded battle at home on Saturday. Uh, we're going to start with men's basketball. MCLA hosted the Tri-State Shootout this past weekend on Friday night. Uh, they defeated RPI by a score of 71-67 before capturing the outright title over Fisher the following day, 82-79 in overtime. As previously mentioned, Keelan Cross was outstanding all weekend long. He will join us in just a few minutes here uh, in the Emsler Campus Center Gymnasium after being named MVP. Uh, his point totals and uh, stat line was just off the charts. 27 and a half points, nine rebounds, six assists um, to get the offense going. Uh, the wins were also the first in the career of head coach Derek Shell. Um, it was just an opportunity to see the Trailblazers in action at home. Uh, it was a very road heavy schedule here early on in the uh, semester and a great way for coach Shell to get uh, his first wins in a Trailblazer uniform. Uh, following that uh, win over Fisher College on Saturday, our very own Jack Dawson had an opportunity to catch up with Coach Shell and get his post game comments. Let's cut to Jack. Good afternoon here in the Emsley Campus Center. I'm Jack Dawson here with men's basketball head coach Derek Shell. Uh, Derek, you guys just won a nail biter, uh, finished off the uh, Tri State tournament 2 uh, 0. Uh, what does this mean for you guys and your team to come out on top uh, after starting this, having a tough start to the season? Well, I mean, I think this game was a microcosm of our season so far. You know, we had a tough start. Uh, we were down, I think, 15, maybe at half, give or take. And the guys just, they, they did what they did last night. They played great defense. They rebounded the basketball. They didn't quit, and they played for each other, which is something we've been trying to get them to do since the beginning of uh, the season. One player uh, I want to talk about in particular is Tyler McKay. He uh, filled in the spot for injured Colin Parrott. He came up really huge, had a career high yesterday in, uh, with 16 points, came in, uh, hit a couple threes like he did last game. Uh, what is his contribution meant to, uh, to this team uh, for filling in for Colin? Well, Tyler got a uh, start first game of the year, and I think he was uh, a little uncomfortable with it. So he's had a chance to come off the bench for a few games. Collins injury gave him the opportunity to do this, but truth be told, the last two nights he's been on the best offensive player for the other team, and he's done a, a fantastic job. Yeah, you know, and uh, this is the last game of the semester for you guys uh, before uh, winter break happens. Uh, so uh, how do you guys uh, look to uh, bring your game plan this semester into next semester? Well, we got one more at Norwich on Tuesday, mm -hmm. so hopefully we can carry that over till then, and then, you know, it's all about building on the positives and trying to learn from the negatives. Absolutely, and uh, congratulations to you, Coach, and your team. Thank you. And we'll Thank you, Jack, and once again, congratulations to Coach Shell and the Trailblazers. And with that said, I am honored to have with us here today MCLA guard uh, Keelan Cross here in studio. Keelan, how are we doing this afternoon? I'm great. How are you? Tremendous, tremendous weekend. It was great to see uh, such a good performance out of yourself. Take us through the team's mindset heading into uh, last weekend. It's really been a tough start uh, to the 2016 season. What changed come Friday night? Well, we played a lot of good teams, so coming into this game, we were focused on being ready to play, playing defense, and focusing on the little things. And we worked really hard in practice. So we knew that if we worked hard and we did the little things that we can compete and not get blown out like we had before. And we did all those things. And let's start with the game Friday night against RPI. Uh, another very good opponent. I believe they came into the game 5-2 and two with a couple of really quality wins. Um, MCLA came in really struggling on the defensive side, as you just alluded to. We were giving up almost 100 points a night. Uh, what was the key to holding uh, the RPI offense down, uh, allowing only 60 seven points that night well we really needed some confidence I thought that was key and with that team they don't play a lot of ISO ball so we had trouble defending the perimeter and they were passing the ball moving it so we defended the paint well um, we were in health defense and we locked in and playing a good team like that we knew if we didn't come ready we could get blown out so we were ready for the competition and you know that game was kind of the coming out part you've had some pretty good uh, numbers uh, early on in the season um, but to be frank and honest a lot of those were, were some late and some ball games that were you know never 
never really in doubt. You had a 27 point performance against RPI, really got to the basket. What was the key for you to get on track offensively that night? Well, my jump shot hasn't fallen um, all year, and I'm primarily a jump shot shooter, I would say. So, Coach always told me to take it to the hoop, take it strong, get the foul if you can. And they couldn't guard me on the perimeter, so I just knew that if I get by them, I can either dish it to someone else or I can get a basket. And one of the things that you really showcased all weekend was your ability to be a facilitator of the offense. Um, Colin Parrott was out all weekend. You primarily handled the point guard duties. Um, got some really good performances out of Tyler McKay, out of Joe Murray. Um, and anytime an injury type uh, situation happens, some other players have to step up. Um, what were some of the comments just um, from your vantage point to see some of those guys really step forward? I mean, it was awesome. I mean, Joe Murray doesn't care about scoring the ball. As long as he gets rebounds and defends the paint, he's happy with it. I was glad Tyler wasn't traveling and he was making his threes. And he shot really well all weekend. I think he missed like one three all weekend. And Joe, I played with Joe forever, so me and him, we click really well. So. Awesome. And you can see McKay there knocking down one of your kickouts. And let's move on to the championship game against Fisher. Uh, MCLA kind of looked like it was going to be a little bit of a, a different ball game at the half. Uh, we really struggled at the end of the first half. Fisher made their last seven shots, uh, went up 15 into the locker rooms at halftime. What was that speech like? What was Coach Shell's mindset of how to get MCLA back in the game at that point? I mean, he basically said, do you guys want to get blown out? Like, this is a character game. Like, he wanted to test our character. And we answered right away. I think we went on like a 20 to two run or something like to start mm -hmm. the, the second half and uh, it all started with the defense we all picked it up defensively we got some easy buckets on the transition and it made for a great game and you were a one-man wrecking crew as I've alluded to many a times uh, in that game 28 points 11 rebounds eight assists all of which were season highs for you um, how were you able to get your teammates involved how were you able to create so many scoring opportunities not only for yourself but for others well when I go by somebody or when I get into the paint they have to bring more defenders so once I got like 12, 15 points, they had to bring help. So once they brought the help, it's very easy for me to find the open man. So I just kick it out to them and they do the rest of it. They make it, they make it look easy for me. And as some, I've watched pretty much the majority of all your games so far to date uh, this season in the Trailblazers. Um, having those two type of games, Friday and Saturday, have to build some confidence. What's the hope going forward that these uh, performances will bring to this team as we start to turn the clock and start to look ahead? I know we got Norwich coming up, but ultimately Mazcac play at the turn of the new year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're 0-0 in the MASCAC, so that's how we're looking at it. We haven't won a game. We haven't lost a game yet. So with this confidence boost, um, we're ready to play. We're ready to play some teams that aren't nationally ranked, and even if they are nationally ranked, we're ready to go. Yeah, and as you've already won a couple of MASCAC awards to date on the season, uh, you renounced the third uh, Rookie of the Week award earlier today, your second consecutive in that category, uh, but you were also tabbed the MASCAC Player of the Week. What's it feel like to sweep both of those categories? Uh, it's an awesome feeling, but I'd much rather take a win. I was telling my teammates and other people, they were asking me, oh, you got Rookie of the Week, how's it feel? I was like, well, I'll trade them all in for a 3-3 three and three record when we were 0-6. So, I mean, winning is my most important thing, and then those accolades are cool at the end. Awesome. Well, it was quite an impressive performance. It was a fantastic weekend of basketball. Really looking forward to watching you the rest of the season and the team continue to grow. And as I said, Trailblazer fans, we've got a couple of games on the docket uh, here this week. The Trailblazers men's basketball team will head up to Norwich on Tuesday night to wrap up their first semester of play. And women's basketball is off uh, until the following week when they head to Daytona Beach, Florida for a pair of games facing Wheaton College out of Massachusetts and Emory and Henry. Uh, and both programs will look forward to the January 4th MASCAC opener at the Emsler Campus Center uh, Gymnasium against Worcester State University. Um, for everything MCL Athletic fans, please log on to our social media pages, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I'm your host, Jeff Polari. Thank you, Keelan, for being with us here this afternoon. We wish you the best of luck. No problem. Thank you.